Are you new to crypto? Have you ever taken profits? Because sometimes I take profits. Not huge amounts, especially not in a bull run. But sometimes I take profits, prices keep going up after I cashed out to USD. And I don't care. I'm like, you know what? I made a good decision. I, I lost out on some gains, but I made a good decision. It's like... You know, like, having having some nice cash reserves. I mean, I have more crypto than cash at this point, but having some nice cash reserves is like, you know, I'm good. Like, I'm, I'm good. I can do what I want to do. Perceivable. I can ride out a bear market. That's important. It's like, if things go terribly south, you know, I'm long-term bullish, long-term... Long term, I know kind of know where it's going. Short term, not so much. So it could drop a lot. But if you have a nice cash reserve, like you can ride it back up. And, you know, that may take a couple years, a few years. Who knows? Maybe we're not going to have that much of a thing going down. But, you know, you can always earn money on stable coins and stuff like that. You know, centralized, BlockFi, Celsius, decentralized, Aave, Compound, Uniswap. Staking, lending, well, that's, yeah. Uh, yield farming on decentralized exchanges, you know, things like that. So it's kind of nice if you can cash out and then earn through those other methods enough to pay the taxes on what you owe. So it's kind of like you earn some interest and then you, you pay off the taxes. So it's like, your account's kind of nice, right? So taking profits is not a bad thing. It's a very personal decision, as you'll probably hear most people say. Um, depends on your financial situation, depends on your risk tolerance, depends on your age, depends on your career, depends on if you have a family, you know, things like that. So uh, even if you miss out on gains, no one ever... 100% times the top, 100% buys the bottom. I mean, occasionally it does happen, but it's like a very low percentage chance. So it, the chance of it to keep happening in the future is low. Even if you're the best, I'm not really a TA guy personally, but uh, apparently it does kind of work. I don't know if it's because everybody uses it, self-fulfilling prophecy, but... Hmm. Yeah. Take, taking profits is fine. Like they say, dollar cost average in, it's less stressful. You'll make, you won't make the most that you could have made, but you won't miss out on the most that you could have missed out on. So it's a nice way to, if you, if, you know, depending on how much gains you're trying to get, you know, how much casino you're trying to roll, but... Casino is a bad metaphor, guys. Casino is like the odds are against you. Unless it's like, yeah, basically the odds are against you. Like poker and stuff like that where it's like skill and stuff, reading people. That's something different. But I'm talking like the roulette table, you know, blackjack. And those aren't even the bad ones. Slot machines. Have you seen a slot machine lately? It's like... It's crazy. Let me know if you like the smoke effects. This is high tech. At the end of the video, I'm gonna get my, my our uh, puppy. I'm gonna show the puppy, mini golden doodle, about nine months old. Um, yeah, taking profits is great. I mean, you can always buy a dip. If it dips way low, you can always buy a dip, and like, it's good to have some dry powder. And you know, Bitcoin could ha could, it's possible there could be something that goes wrong, and you know, crashes. I mean, even if it crashes, they would probably it wouldn't be the end. I don't think Bitcoin would go to zero if it crashed. 
So a lot of it's on centralized exchanges. They can even keep trading. Even if Bitcoin network is not working, centralized exchanges can keep trading. And now obviously deposits and withdrawals would be uh, not possible. So they would be internal. Off-chain centralized database. Y'all know what I'm saying. You dig. I'm working on Crypto Influencers Part 2. Hilarious. Crypto Influencer Clips Part 2. So far I have three guests. Brand new. Not featured in Part 1. Anyway. Guess is not the right word. But, you know, taking profits. Cha-ching, ching, 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 ching. Well, I think we have at least like a 3x. I think Bitcoin dominance is going to fall a little bit. But you know what? Bitcoin is the sure bet. Almost a sure bet. I wouldn't go all in Bitcoin. I wouldn't go all in anything. Just because nothing is a sure bet. I mean, seriously. Even if you're like very conservative, it's like why not have 90% Bitcoin, 10% ETH, a few extra percent of some other shit. You know what I'm saying? Why not? Why not? But yeah, taking profits. You know, it's like I like to have money here. I like to have money in my bank account. You know, I like to have money here and there. Not too many places, because then it gets crazy. But it's like, yeah, money in my bank account that's insured by the federal government in the United States, because that's where I'm at. Maybe you guys have some shit too. And even if it's insured, like, United States is like 250K dollars. But it's better than nothing. They're just going to print it. and Or maybe they won't print it. But they're probably just going to print it if, if, if all the banks fail and they need to reimburse those people for that insurance. So, but I like to have some there, you know, what if they just ban crypto altogether? What if they kill all the exchanges in this country? I mean, you'd still have it, but it would be hard. But the big, oh, so what I was, I was getting at, ooh, this is good. The Bitcoin network failure, like something really bad happens. They could just take a snapshot, relaunch it, as far as I understand it. And I'm not an expert. If you want to really know how Bitcoin works, Andreas Antonopoulos my guy hit him up a antinop on youtube but just search andreas antinopolis bitcoin my guy my guy much respect he was featured in crypto influencers part one yeah andreas is very serious very formal educator who likes to have fun and he made a good joke that made me laugh so he was in crypto influencers part one he got jokes y'all he got jokes I don't have any jokes right now. I'm not, not prepared. So Bitcoin could take a snapshot, relaunch with some fixes, be back online. It's okay. Again, it's kind of confusing how this shit works for newbies at first, but it's kind of a consensus between the nodes, the exchanges, the holders, the miners, the developers. All these people are coming together in a decentralized way. And then... Shit happens. There could be a fork. I was listening to Bitcoin and Coffee Show uh, just like 20 minutes ago, live show. Good people. Bitcoin and Coffee. You know, they just focused on Bitcoin, but they were talking about NFTs and stuff. But they were saying, you know, there could be that place where it's like sanctioned Bitcoin that's clean, and then like all other Bitcoin that's like going through DeFi and getting locked and wrapped on Ethereum and going through mixers and going from the dark net and all that shit. And it's just like the membrane. Oh man, I'm just coming up. I'm, I'm spitting off the top. Insane on the membrane. The Bitcoin can't pass through. Ooh, maybe it's a fork. Maybe it's some here, some there, some there everywhere. And then some get through because they get laundered. Just like the shit laundered, but... USD banks do the most laundering. Look, if you watch my hate BlockFi video, check it out. It's my last video on the channel. Um, just type Josh GH News leaving BlockFi or BlockFi sucks. I can't remember. That's not important. That's not important. So, yeah, there could be these clean Bitcoin, not clean Bitcoin. It's not really a thing right now, but. Yeah, people laundering Bitcoin through the dark nets is a thing. It's not a lot of Bitcoin, but it, it is Bitcoin. You know, Monero is getting more popular. 
which it should be. And, you know, hopefully they don't ban Monero. But, honestly, Monero and privacy, that's what's up. That's what's up. But, uh... My other concern about Bitcoin is what if the government really starts mining it and, like, controlling all the hash rate, and then would we just, like, blacklist the miners, but, like, you can't really trace them if they're good, and, yeah, they'd have to get a lot of hardware, but, like, you don't think if the big mining farm in Texas, if the, go you think the government's not gonna know and be able to be, like, you're mining for us now, biatch, sensor transactions, don't put that shit in the blocks, yo, and then maybe Bitcoin splits, who knows what's gonna happen, I don't even know what I was talking about in the beginning of this video, I'm on a tangent, Giving you the best content. Oh, let me think of a joke. Let me think of a joke. I have a really bad farm joke I could tell you guys. Don't clip this. Um, what do you... And I love trail mix. I love nuts. Dried fruit. Love making dried fruit. Fruit leather. I should show you guys some, but... I don't want to dox myself too hard. At least do some work, fool. I'm not even worth doxing. But... Um, Okay, joke time. Stupid joke, stupid joke. Easiest joke to remember, though. What do you call nuts on the wall? If you guessed walnuts, good for you. The next one, what do you call nuts on your chest? Chestnuts. Duh. What do you call nuts on your chin? A deke in the mouth. Never had, so can't can't say if that's accurate or not. I've never had a chin nuts. I've never had a chin nuts. Anyway, as promised, I think doodle. I I think the the puppy is over here. Say hi, Mia. You're on candid camera. She has, her hair is getting pretty long. She's due for a haircut, but we just brushed her, gave her a bath. She's looking real fluffy, real soft. Yeah. All right, guys. The full view. She's tired. Had a big day, you know. But uh, until next time, thanks for tuning in. Leave a like, a comment, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know.